let's load some skull busters and today we're going to be taking you through all the engine swaps that we know of at the moment from the beautiful the glorious and the absolute head scratchers so without further ado let's get into the engines first up we have the Abarth 595 has a measly 30 horsepower but you can swap this out for a Honda Civic 2020 engine and that will push the engine up to 315 horsepower in this absolutely tiny car so it'll give you a power to weight ratio 1.82 and it'll only set you back 127 grand brilliant next one we now have the Alfa Romeo 4C so I've already upgraded this car so the increase in horsepower won't be as much but you can put in this a Ferrari 458 engine and that will take it to a base horsepower of 563 so that would be a decent little car that small frame with a big engine is what you want we're back with the 4C but with the group 3 road car so it's already got a big increase in power but this is to put in the Suzuki VGT engine so that takes it up to 577 horsepower Gives you a nice power to weight ratio 2.33 and it's 325 grand. Next up we've got the Amused Nismo 380RS. And you might think, oh this has got a pretty good engine already. Yeah, forget that. 748 horsepower courtesy of the LS7 Rampage. What a beast. And obviously be able to stick superchargers and all that on it. 748 horsepower. More could you want? Next up we have the Amuse S2000 GT1 Turbo and in this you're going to whack in a Honda GT500 NSX engine. Now bear in mind I've already kitted up this car so you get a base load of 600 horsepower. It's beautiful. It'll give you a power to weight ratio 1.69 and it won't push the PP that I, which is what we all want. Alright, on to the next one. Next up, we've got the Audi TTS Coupe. This is going to go from its engine up to an Audi R8 engine. And this is going to take the power up to 414 brake horsepower as a base and bring that power to rate ratio down to 3.4. And it's only 183 grand, so it's a bit of a steal, really. So that pretty much gives you a mini R8, and if you think about it that way. Right, next one. We're on the BMWs next, 3 litre CSL, and that's going to get a GT3 Z4 engine. This is going to push the brake horsepower up to 522. Probably enough horses to make those wheels spin all day long, no matter which ones you put on them. 325 grand, bit of a steal really if you want to drive this puppy around uh, some of the more intense races. Right, next one. Some of you may recognise this livery from Top Gear. I won't make any more comments above that. Right, this is the M3 and it's getting a Z4 engine as well. So it's going to take it from 391 horsepower up to 443. It's not too much of an improvement, but again, it's if you want to push your car a little bit further. It's a cracking looking car, this. It's probably my favourite version of the M3. Love it about with all the others, so I'll probably give this one a go. Another M3 next, but this one is going to get the Suzuki Group 3 VGT car engine, and that's going to take it up to 577 horsepower, so more than the Z4 engine, uh, and it's going to push the PP right up. Power to weight ratios right down at 2.17, 325 grand. Bit of a steal this one. Next up, we've got a C3 Corvette, and that gets a C7 engine. So, 167 grand, and that's going to push your power up to 754 brake horsepower. Now, this is fully kitted out, so the increase is only 150, but on the base engine, it'll be much more. This engine swap also applies to the Stingray, which is uh, the non-soft top version of this car. So, either or, good engine swap this. 
Next up, you're not going to have problems getting up to 88 miles per hour in this. You're going to take your DeLorean, you're going to swap out an LS7 Rampage engine to give it 748 horsepower. Not quite 1.21 gigawatts, but I think that'll do. Next up, we've got the Di Tommaso Pantera, and that's going to get the Ford Mustang GT engine. And that's going to take this car from 325 brake horsepower up to 434. Again, not a massive increase, but it gives it a new lease of life. Right, on to the next car. Next up, we've got the Challenger, and we're going to be putting in the Hellcat engine. So we're going to take it from its 425 horsepower all the way up to 707 as a base. From there on, you can push it up even more and you can turn this car into an absolute beast of a drag car. Next up, we've probably got the best engine swap of them all. You can put an Enzo engine in the F40. Now I've already done this, so I couldn't tell you the previous stats. All I will tell you is this car can compete with the GT3 cars at 800 pp, so it's well worth putting the engine in this car and it sounds like an absolute beauty. Reet, on to the next one. Next up we've got the G Redder Fugu Z, already a modified car, but we're going to take that 294 brake horsepower engine, replace it with a 561 Skyline Silhouette engine. So make sure you put a racing transmission on this, just to shorten those gear changes. Next up we've got the Hondas, so we're starting with the S800 and the S660. These are both going to get the Honda 2 Plus 4 engine, which is in fact a motorcycle engine. So it's only a litre, but it'll out, its output will be 211 horsepower, and for the S800 as you can see, that's almost three times as much power as it's got already. So it's a decent engine to put in this car. 600 grand, a bit on the pricey side but it brings that power to waste ratio right down. So I'll get the same again for the S660. Modern car actually has less horsepower than the original and it weighs a bit more, but the added bonus of this car is you don't have to go to the used car market to buy it. Right, onto the next ones. So we've got the Civic engine next. First car is the Honda Beat. Uh, this takes it from 63 horsepower to 315, so that's a major boost that. And again, you'll be able to tune this even further. Quite a cheap engine swap, 127 grand, but tyres might not be able to handle that one, just because of how thin they are. Next up's the old Civic, the 98 Civic. Again, just swapping out the engine to the new one from 181 to 315 horsepower. This will be for your Civic lovers out there, this one. And then lastly, we've got the Honda Integra Type R from 98. So it's got 198 brake horsepower, only weighs 1,080 kilos, but you're going to put that engine in and it's going to have 315 horsepower. It's going to push the weight up by 60 kilos, but it'll be well worth it. And you can whack a turbo on that and you'll have a great car. Next up, we've got the NSXs. First up, is the 1992 version and these are both going to get the NSX GT500 engine so it's going to take the horsepower from 284 all the way up to 603 and it's actually going to bring the weight down by 100 kilos half a million pound but it definitely gives this car a new lease of life next up We've got the newer NSX, not the brand new one, but the 2002 one. And this is going to have the same engine swap, the GT500, and that's going to take it from 290 horsepower to 603. Brings down that power to weight ratio to 1.87, so loads of potential here, and that's just the beginning. Right, on to the next one. This next car is Willy's Jeep. Yep, you heard it right. We're going to put a Hellcat engine in it. And we've dressed it up like Jurassic Park and sod it. It's going in and buying this one. It's just absolutely nuts. 60 horsepower to 707. 
probably the best engine swap in the game. The pure idiocy. It's great. It's fucking great. Yeah, 700 horsepower in a World War II van. What more can you ask for? Next up, we've got the Countach. So more craziness, but from a source we'd expect. This is maxed out. So I've already had this engine swap, installed it, upgraded it. This is a thousand horsepower Aventador engine. Don't know how much it'd be in the shop, but I'd put it between half a million and a million. You get in a pretty much one for one brake horsepower to kilogram ratio and this is fully kitted out weight reduction all the tuning brilliant car to drive as well next up we've got the lancia delta integrale and the engine swap we're going to be putting in this is the nissan gtr crazy this one so you're going to take 209 horsepower and up it all the way up to 591 it's good for tokyo this car so i'd definitely give it a go this is going straight in my mind no questions asked definitely worth the wait next up we've got the ford focus rs18 brilliant car to be putting an engine swap in and the engine that's going in this is the v8 Ford GT LM car engine and it's going to take it from four well I've kept it out so maybe about 250 horsepower up to 442 as a base and it's supercharged as well so no turbo like 700 grand dirt cheap next up we've got the Ford Mustang Mac 1 and the engine going in this is the Ford Mustang GT that's going to take us from 302 horsepower up to 434. Lighter engine block, better power to weight ratio. Jobs are good and still naturally aspirated. So, not missing out on any of that goodness there. Right, on to the next one. Moving on to the Mazdas. And first up, we've got the Unos Roadster. So, this is already kitted out at 240 horsepower. But, the rx7 engine that you can put into it it's going to take it up to 292 and that's just a standard 225 grand little car let's bang on that next up we've got the 2015 mazda roadster i've just realized they're not called mx5s on this for some reason uh, so this is getting an lt1 corvette engine and that's going to take the horsepower output to 453 brake horsepower massive increase that next up we've got the 787b engines so first car that this can go on is the rx7 gtx otherwise known as the savannah to those of you who remember it from back in the day uh, the other cars that can get the 787b engine that will take any output up to 690 is the RX7 2002, so the one, the shape we all know and love, the latest one. The RX8 Spirit R, and also the Mazda 3. Very interesting that, because if, as much as I do like the Mazda 3, the uh, engine output isn't great, so this is a welcome boost if you ask me. So there you have it, there's the Mazdas. Next up we have the Mini Cooper S and that's going to get a Honda Civic engine and that's going to take the output up to 315 brake horsepower. Don't think it needs any more than that because this car has bicycle wheels. <laughs> so getting any grip on this is going to be an absolute nightmare. Next we have the Nissans and we're starting with the 2000 GTR Nissans and they're getting the Nissan Skyline Silhouette engines so they're going to take them up from whatever horsepower they are the 157 and pump it up to 561 beast of an engine to put in such little cars so imagine you could have good fun in these ones the next engine we're on 
is the Nissan Silvia S15 engine and this can go in the Fairlady Z432 and it'll take the engine power from 157 brake horsepower to 246 bit of a lighter engine as well so good all round it's a good tuning engine as well the other car is the Nissan Silvia S13 so again this will push the brake horsepower from 171 up to 246 and uh, it'll just put a more modern engine in it and better tuning options right on to the next one this is for you specific engine tuners out there if you're not happy with your engine in your S15 you can now throw in a 2JZ from the uh, Toyota Supra that'll punch your engine up to 325 but I can't see that being where anyone would uh, leave it I'll leave this one down to you where you take it next up we've got the Nissan Fairlady Z Z34 many of you may recognize this car this is going to get a Nissan GTR Nismo GT500 engine so it'll be good on the fuel hopefully and uh, we'll see how good this goes around tracks and we can kit this up even further if we wanted to with turbos etc on to the next most powerful engine next up we've got the 180 SX Type X and this is going to get the Nissan GTR Nismo engine from 2017 591 horsepower absolute banger of an engine again whack on a few turbos you'd be laughing with this the other car to get this is the Fairlady Z300 ZX Roadster I think that's what it's called oh, TT2 seater Anyway, this gets the GTR Nismo engine as well, 591 horsepower, absolute beast of an engine. But it gets better. Here's the Fair Lady 240ZG from 1971. And you think to yourself, how can it get better than the GTR Nismo? Well, you just stick an LS7 Rampage tuned engine. And that'll give you 748 horsepower in this little tiny car. <laughs> brilliant honestly jesus christ uh, and uh, it just keeps going crazy here with one of the cheaper engine swaps at 167 grand a s14 sylvia you can stick in an lt5 corvette engine and that'll give you 754 brake horsepower absolutely nuts and this is for both sylvia s14s so the, the uh, sylvia k arrow you can see here and then the sylvia S14 Type S if you've got either of these in your garage whack a Corvette engine in it and there's even more Nissans with the Skylines now the proper ones you can stick an hard 92 CP engine in them <laughs> absolutely crazy 788 horsepower and great on the fuel these you ought to give one of these a go round Tokyo might do a tune for these uh, and it's the same for the R34 stick the uh, R92 CP engine in that it'll go all day long and if you stick a medium turbo on it I think it goes up to about 987 horsepower so just absolutely crazy but that's not the most there's one more engine that's got more horsepower than these and that goes in the S13 Sylvia and it's going to be an LS7 BRZ engine 1000 horsepower nuts absolutely nuts just get it in get it in don't bother waiting next up is the firebird trans amp from pontiac 219 horsepower bit disappointing but we can correct that we can put in an ls9 corvette engine which will bounce that power all the way up to 639 horsepower making this a proper muscle car next up we're on the porsches and the first one we're getting is the 911 Carrera S, the 993. And it's going to get a quite interesting engine, this. It's going to get the CTR engine from Ruff. So this is a tuned Porsche engine, and it's going to put out uh, 690 horsepower, almost doubling your horsepower. Really good one, this one. Next up, got the 911 Turbo 930 from 81. And this is going to get the GT3 Porsche engine the one from the RSR so that's going to take the power up from 295 horsepower all the way up to 509 
Hopefully the tyres can handle it and if it can, it's be a sweet car to have this one. Again, same engine in the 991. Doesn't go up as much because this has already got around 490 horsepower. So what I suspect with this one is that we'll need to test is does it increase the fuel efficiency? Because on some cars they get a hell of a lot of more fuel efficient. But remains to be seen. It's a lot of money for a little gain. So we'll need to test this one out. Next up we have the RE Animia, which is a kicked out RX7. And this is going to get the LS7 Rampage engine. Now I've detuned this to 600 pp, but this will give you an output of 785 brake horsepower. Absolutely crazy. Next up, we've got an engine swap that makes no sense at all. Uh, the BRZ drift car with a thousand horsepower, you can swap it out for an NSX engine with 600 horsepower. Very strange. Don't know what to make of this one. The only added benefit is the reduction in weight. Strange. Oh well, on to the next one. Next up, we've got the 2015 BRZ, and that's going to get the Suzuki VGT Group 3 car engine. Again, very efficient engine, so hopefully it'll increase the fuel efficiency and pushes that weight to power ratio right down. Next up, the latest BRZ. And this one's going to get everyone's favourite engine, the 2JZ from the Supra. And it's only going to take it up 100 horsepower, but everyone knows this uh, engine can be kitted out like there's no tomorrow. So happy tuning. Right, this is the last BRZ, I promise. This is the STI Sport. And this is going to get an engine swap to an LT5 Corvette C7 engine which is going to bump that horsepower almost four times up to 754 and turn this into one beast of a car. Cheap and cheerful this one, right, on to the next one. Now we have another crazy engine swap because this is the little Suzuki Cappuccino which is an absolutely tiny car and we're going to give it an RX-7 engine. You might think, oh that's not too bad. Yeah, just whack a few turbochargers on this and you'll see how fast this goes. This is good for Tokyo Grand in this one, so highly recommend it. Next up, we've got the Toyota 86 GT Limited, whatever that means, a 2016 model. And this is going to get an LT5 Corvette C7 engine. 754 horsepower. Power to weight ratio 1.68, it's almost like it's the same as the BRZ. Not saying anything. Right, on to the next one. We have the Toyota Crown Athlete, which is your average sedan car with a big engine, where you can just almost double its power with the SC430 Lexus engine, which is 516 horsepower as opposed to the 309. Not a bad upgrade. Right, onto the Toyota Tundra. This is going to get the same engine, so it's going to pump up the power from 379 up to that 516 again. Just a little bump up in power, but it can go a long way when you're tuning it, especially a car of this weight. Could be good fun. Right, onto the next one. We've got the Toyota Yaris RZ High Performance. And we're going to give it even more performance. Not much, but we're going to put again everyone's favourite engine in it, the 2JZ. It's going to pump it up about 50, 60 horsepower, just under 60 horsepower. But as you know, you'll be able to do a lot with this engine. An extra litre and a half of capacitor, jobs are good. Next up, we've got the GR86 RZ 2021 model. And this is going to get the 2JZ again. So it's going to take it up from 231 horsepower all the way up to 325. 200 grand for this engine swap, so good value. And it gives you an extra bit of power in this model of car. And lastly, everyone's classic favourite Gran Turismo car, the Toyota Supra. 97 model, and this is going to get... No, it's not getting a 2JZ. <laughs> it's getting a Pagani Huayra, if I said that right. Pagani Huayra engine. 
I'm just going to bump it up to 730 horsepower as a base. Absolutely nuts. Probably one of the best engine swaps there is. Next up, we've got the TVR Tuscan Speed 6. This is going to get an engine swap from an already pretty out there, 360 horsepower, all the way up to 649 horsepower, courtesy of that LT4 Camaro engine. Again, you can whack superchargers on this and everything, and you'll probably take it up to about 800 horsepower in an already pretty nuts car. TVRs are not to be trifled with. Next up, we're going to give Herbie a new engine. The Volkswagen Beetle from back in the day is going to get a 255 horsepower Porsche engine. Absolutely nuts. It's like the Mini Cooper. This wheels are just not going to be able to handle it. But it is what it is. I'm sure it'll be good fun. And last up, we've got the Volkswagen Golf Mark 1 GTI. This is going to boost the horsepower up from 239 to 588. Absolutely nuts. Well worth a go, this one. I think this is one I will be giving a good go at. Right, we've got three cars that I didn't have that are on the list as well. First one is the Ford Roadster that has just disappeared, never to be seen again. That gets a Shelby GT350 engine. Next one is the Plymouth Superbird and that gets the Dodge Hellcat engine, same as the Challenger, so that'll be absolutely nuts, making it into a proper muscle car. And finally, it's the Volkswagen Samba Bus, and that's gonna get a M6403 911 engine, which is the engine out of the 964 Carrera S. So again, another absolutely bonkers engine swap. And there you have it, folks. You can uh, witness me drifting horribly in the background. That's all the engine swaps for now, and if they add any more, we'll let you know. Until then, adios.